How did the Battle of Geonosis change Mace Windu forever? For thousands of years, the Jedi Order has produced some of the most capable warriors that the galaxy has at its disposal. And this legion of incredibly skilled Force-sensitive peacekeepers often served as the preeminent defense and security force within the Republic. As a complex and intricate organization, it grew and developed into a functional system, complete with a hierarchy, ranks, and delegation of duties between different sectors. And in the near future, we will be breaking down all of the Jedi ranks. But for today's topic, we have something far more sinister at play. One exceptionally important rank of the Jedi that is often overlooked is the responsibilities of the Master of the Order. The Master of the Order, which is quite different from the Jedi Grandmaster for a few very important reasons. And today, acolytes and students of the Force, we will open up our archives yet again and examine the holocron devoted solely to the Master of the Order, as well as why Mace Windu, being a Master of the Order himself, renounced the role. Before we describe how the Battle of Geonosis changed Mace Windu forever for one very specific reason, let us analyze the duties of the Master of the Order. The Master of the Order is typically cited to be the second in command only to the Jedi Grand Master, and is responsible for the structural integrity of the Jedi as a whole. While the Grand Master presides over the philosophies, policies, and teachings that the Jedi under this era would follow, the Master of the Order took on a much more logistical role. Responsibilities for this position would include being the preeminent battle tactician and strategist of the Order, as well as a wartime commander. While Grandmaster Yoda certainly took part in the Clone Wars and fought his share of battles, there is no denying that Mace Windu had a much more prevalent military presence during the war, which is reminiscent of his duties as the Master of the Order. But it's important to note that by this time, Windu had already resigned this position, and that this wasn't an official response to his title, but instead, a holdover from his previous habits and expertise. So, why exactly did Mace Windu surrender the title when the Clone Wars broke out? With the reasoning dating all the way back to the first battle of the Clone Wars, the first battle of Geonosis at the dawn of the war. Well, thanks to the Shatterpoint novel, we get an in-depth look at why Mace Windu believed that he completely failed in his responsibilities as Master of the Order, and gives us a better look at Mace Windu's rigid philosophy as a Jedi and as a member of the Republic. It's also important to mention that the Shatterpoint novel is considered to be Legends continuity, but the details that it explores in terms of the Battle of Geonosis are in line with the canon material, so it's reasonable to conclude that since the events of the flashback didn't change, it's likely that Windu's thoughts are in line with his canon depiction. Shatterpoint goes into great detail regarding his internal monologue while holding Jango Fett at Blade Point and confronting Count Dooku just before the eruption of the war. In the film Attack of the Clones, Mace Windu faces both the traitor's Jedi Master as well as perhaps the most most skilled bounty hunter in the galaxy. And not only does he have a distinct upper hand in this isolated situation, but he has at his back an army of Jedi. This here is the moment that he could come to replay in his mind for years, keeping him up at night and proving to be one of his greatest failures. Jango Fett was ultimately able to divert Windu's attack with a flamethrower, leading him to jump from the balcony and into the battleground below where the Battle of Geonosis would begin. And this decision set the course of galactic history for years to come resulting in the deaths of billions. Not only is this the spark that ignited the Clone War and sent the galaxy spiraling into conflict, but it also allowed Palpatine's ultimate rise to power. The destruction of the Jedi Order as a whole following, and the rise and birth of Darth Vader. Each of these integrals events can be traced back to this one fateful decision, and while Mace Windu died before the dawn of the Empire, he was able to see the results of his actions up until a certain point in time. What Mace Windu had later wished he had done, however, was died atop that balcony, and for a very good reason. For years, Mace Windu was forced to watch the calamity of a war that he could have prevented with a small sacrifice of his own life. Each death, each ravaged world, each enslaved race and fallen Jedi was a constant reminder that this entire scenario could have been prevented if only he had chosen death. He thought through multiple alternate scenarios where events could have played out much differently. One of these alternate takes that Shatterpoint explores is that he found the most intriguing scenario when he had given his life to kill Dooku, beheading the Sith Lord at the cost of being killed by Jango. In this scenario, Windu would forgo his own safety and his life in order to seize the opportunity to kill the leader of the Separatist movement. And in turn, he would have been killed by Fett's flamethrower and would have left the bounty hunter free to wreak havoc over the Geonosian arena. But... Dooku would be no more. 
Dooku, a former Jedi and gifted politician, was a brilliant wartime tactician and formidable strategist. He was the keystone of the Separatist movement, the face of it, and the rebellion would have been all but crushed without him as his figurehead. Without Dooku, the Separatists would not have proper leadership to truly stand against the Republic and the Jedi, and the war would have fizzled out far sooner and with much less collateral destruction. This would have changed galactic history, and even by the time of Windu's death, the weight of his actions had already had dire ramifications on the galaxy. The galaxy was divided by Windu's decision, and no system was safe from the calamity of the war that had already cost the participants dearly. Killing Dooku would have left the Separatist movement in an utter disarray and in need of a new, weaker leader. This likely would have collapsed their organizational structure and likely would have left them incapable of waging a war on the Republic with the same magnitude and severity as seen in the Clone War. Who would the Separatists be forced to turn to? Could it be Newt Gunray or a representative of the Banking Clan, neither of which had battlefield experience or charisma to lead millions? Beyond this, their new leader would not have understood the inner workings of the Jedi Order the same as Dooku did, who had been a Jedi for decades. Not to mention this would have left Palpatine in search of a new apprentice, and though the complete scope of his involvement and master plan were not fully realized until much later, the Jedi came to know about the return of the Sith and the rise of Dooku as an apprentice to a mysterious Dark Lord. Not to mention here, Windu would have likely saved the life of Anakin Skywalker as well. Without Dooku constantly prodding and turning him to the darkness, perhaps Anakin himself would have never turned. Without a war, Anakin would would have never been subjugated to the horrors of battle, and while the Clone War certainly wasn't the only contributing factor to Anakin's downfall, it was a very large piece of the night that he would eventually grow into. What's unique about the Shatterpoint novel, and the Shatterpoint ability in its namesake, is that it allows someone to perceive extremely important events in time and space. Mace Windu realized that he was at a Shatterpoint when he held his blade up to Dooku's throat, and in the end, he made the wrong decision. Not to mention that he was arrogant, and he he led hundreds of Jedi to their deaths that day because they were utterly unprepared for the war at hand. Immediately, the consequences of his decision poured over Mace Windu. And after the Battle of Geonosis, we get a different part of Windu, someone who is guilt-ridden, so much so that he deemed himself unworthy and unfit to lead the Jedi as the Master of the Order. And therefore, as the war broke out, the role of Master of the Order and Jedi Grandmaster were molded into one role, with Yoda taking on both responsibilities in the Twilight of the Jedi. With that said though, Windu was still one of the most formidable battlefield commanders that the Republic had ever seen, but his official title had been renounced. Windu was unworthy. And although he maintained his seat on the Jedi Council along with the rest who served, he still would never forget that Shatterpoint on Geonosis, an event that would change him forever. Windu's life in his mind would have been a small price to pay for the security of the Republic and the destruction of the Sith. It was true that the arrogance of Mace Windu blinded him in this moment, and the Jedi Master would suffer the consequences both with his own life much later at a much greater cost as well as his very mental fortitude. This is the moment that broke Mace Windu forever. As he stood, watching the Jedi fall around him and the Republic crumble, he was left with many regrets. Many regrets about the way the Jedi dogma had corrupted the view of a once noble organization, but most importantly, he held himself responsible for this one act and saw all of this calamity fall on his shoulders. But anyway, my friends and fellow acolytes of the Force, what are your thoughts on this in-depth look at Mace Windu and the events that took place there on Geonosis, as well as the rank of Master of the Order? Does this video make you perceive Mace Windu a little bit differently? And now, what are your thoughts of him as a character and as a Jedi? As always, my friends and acolytes, thank you for visiting our archives. May the Force be with you, and I hope to see you soon.